Okay, Bill, you want to start? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Bill Thompson, chairperson of the CUNY Board of Trustees. I'm going to ask the secretary of the board to please call attendance so we can be sure we have a quorum. Members of the Board of Trustees, uh, please respond present when you hear your name. Uh, Chairperson William C. Thompson, Jr. Present. Vice Chairperson Barry F. Schwartz. Present. Trustee Michael Irvinides. Present. Trustee Henry T. Berger. Present. Trustee Una S. T. Clark. Trustee Lorraine Cortez Vasquez. Present. Trustee Fernando Ferrer. Present. Trustee Kevin D. Kim. Present. Trustee Myra Linares Garcia. Present. Trustee Robert F. Mujica. Here. Trustee Brian D. Oberfell. Present. Trustee Jill O'Donnell Tormey. Present. Trustee Charles A. Shorter. Present. Trustee Ken Sunshine. Present. Trustee Sandra Wilkin. Present. Trustee Martin J. Burke. Present. Trustee Timothy G. Hunter. Present. Great. And I just remind everybody to mute your phones. Okay. Okay. That's it, Bill. All right. You have we a have a. We have a quorum. Okay, this public meeting of the City University of New York Board of Trustees is now called to order. On March 7th, 2020, Governor Cuomo issued Executive Order 202, declaring a state of emergency in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. On March 13th, 2020, Governor Cuomo issued Executive Order 20.1, I mean 202.1, which included a suspension of law allowing the attendance of meetings telephonically or other similar service. Article 7 of the Public Offices Law, to the extent necessary to permit any public body to meet and take such actions authorized by the law without permitting in-public, in-person access to meetings and authorizing such meetings to be held remotely by conference call or similar service, provided that the public has the ability to view or listen to such proceeding and that such meetings are recorded and later transcribed. In accordance with the executive order, this board meeting is being held via teleconference with a live stream found at the CUNY Board of Trustees website, as well as broadcast and cablecast live on CUNY TV Channel 75. A copy of the calendar is also available online at the CUNY Board of Trustees website. Additional items may be added during the meeting. As a reminder, please mute your phones so we can ensure that everyone can hear. I'd like to ask the secretary to take a roll call attendance for members of the chancellery. Okay, so members of the chancellery, uh, please respond present when you hear your name. Chancellor Felix V. Matos Rodriguez. Presente. General Counsel and Senior Vice Chancellor for uh, Legal Affairs, Derek Davis. Present. Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost, Jose Luis Cruz. Present. Executive Vice Chancellor and Chief Operating Officer, Hector Batista. Present. Senior Vice Chancellor for Institutional Affairs, Strategic Advancement you, Special Counsel, Glenda Grace. Unicorn. Unicorn. Hi, Hi, Trustee Clark. How are you? Good. Okay. We, we're taking roll call. I'll add you to the roll call. Uh, Senior you. Vice Chancellor and Chief Financial Officer, Matthew Sapienza. Present. Senior Vice Chancellor of the Office for Facilities Planning and Construction Management, Alan Liu, I think is absent and excused. Senior Vice Chancellor for Labor Relations, Pam Silverblatt. Present. Vice Chancellor and University Chief Information Officer, Brian Cohen. Present. Vice Chancellor for Communications and Marketing, Maite Unco. Present. Vice Chancellor for Risk, Audit, and Compliance, Richard R. White. Present. Vice Chancellor of Human Resources Management, Dorian K. Gloria. Present. Interim Vice Chancellor for University Advancement, Andrea Shapiro Davis. Present. 
Okay, and I just remind everybody to mute their phones. I sound like a broken record, but... Okay, thank you, Gail. Uh, before we get started today, I'd like to acknowledge members of the CUNY community who have perished during this pandemic. The Board of Trustees and the entire CUNY community send our deepest condolences to their families and their friends. I'd like everybody to join me in a moment of silence in their memory. Okay, thank you all. I want to thank my fellow trustees. I'm going to ask everybody mm -hmm. to mute your phones uh, while we're, you know, because we can hear a couple people in the background. Uh, I'd like to thank my fellow trustees for their efforts on the important work of CUNY over the last two months. Our committees met a few weeks ago, and nine of you have been participating on search committees for new presidents. I understand that several of these committees have already forwarded finalists to the chancellery, and let me thank you all. I think I speak for all of my fellow trustees when I say that the spring usually brings one of our favorite activities as trustees, participation in commencement ceremonies. While we may not be able to celebrate in person, I'd like to take a moment this afternoon to salute our graduates for demonstrating extraordinary resilience during these difficult times. In the spirit of Ernest Hemingway, you each personify grace under pressure. You overcame great odds to get to this day and were given one final test as you approached the finish line, and you all passed with flying colors. Congratulations to all of our graduates this year. You should all feel especially proud of your accomplishments. I will say that we all certainly do. As you know, the CUNY Board of Trustees could not convene its May 11, 2020 public hearing and Queensboro hearing. Instead, the Office of Secretary accepted written testimony and statements from concerned individuals on items on the calendar for May 18, 2020, board meeting via email. Testimonies were accepted until 12.30 p.m. on Monday, May 11th, and shared with the trustees on May 14th. A total of 1,269 testimonies were submitted, of which 986 were submitted as a same as a similar form letter yeah. concerning the impact of budget cuts on campuses. Specifically, the letter calls on the board to reject any and all cuts to the university budget, especially with regard to the reduction in courses or the layoff of adjunct faculty. The letter also outlines the public the PSC's impact bargaining framework and urges the board, as well as management of the university, to accept these demands. 283 testimonies were individually written, including submissions of essays by CUNY faculty, which appeared in the new, in the new regarding how COVID-19 has affected higher ed and CUNY in particular. Testimony was received from every corner of the university, our community colleges, our senior colleges, and our graduate schools, from students, faculty, and staff, full and part. And I know that we all will make sure that we take a look at the voices within our community in their written words. Let me thank all of those who submitted names or submitted testimony. Uh, testimonies are available for review in the office of the secretary. Let me now ask to Chancellor Matos Rodriguez for comments. Mr. Chancellor. Thank you, uh, Chair Thompson and trustees, uh, presidents and vice chancellors. It's good to be back here with you today. And even when we, as we deal with uh, shifting challenges, our priorities and commitment to this great university remain the same. I think back to this time last year, just over 12 months since I began my tenure as chancellor, at a time that coincided with the beginning of commencement season that the chair uh, alluded to in the beginning of his remarks. I still have vivid memories of the ceremonies that I attended and of the joyous expressions on the faces of the students that I address and their families. The circumstances have changed. Today, while we again move through my favorite part of the academic year, graduation, we also acknowledge, like the chair said, those from CUNY who have lost their lives from COVID-19. We are developing plans to recognize these members of our community so they will never be forgotten and they can be celebrated. Our CUNY family was shaken when we lost 14 beloved members of our staff, 10 members of our faculty, and four students. 
it's hard to process these unexpected losses, and I share with the chair uh, deepest condolences to the families and others who have lost a loved one, and wish a speedy recovery for anyone who is recovering from this virus. As we grieve, we summon the inner strength to carry our daily lives, and uh, we are near the finish line in what has been an extraordinarily difficult semester. So I want to acknowledge all the hard work, resilience, and fortitude from our dedicated students, faculty, and staff. Their strength of spirit is what makes this university so special and where we remain so optimistic about the future. Words cannot express the pride that I feel on the class of 2020 who have endured and overcome so much uncertainty, stress, and hardship to accomplish what they set out to achieve. They are clearly an inspiration to all of us. While it breaks my heart that we can celebrate their achievements in person, we're doing the next best thing by saluting the class of 2020 over the coming weeks with a robust array of virtual celebrations. The first celebration was held uh, Friday by our School of Law, and the last is scheduled to be held by your college on June 27th. We are drawing from a diverse group of speakers from the worlds of government, philanthropy, and the sciences, such as New York Attorney General uh, Letitia T. James, U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer, and former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, among other notables. Campus are producing special video celebrations to capture this special moment for posterity. I recorded personal messages for many of the colleges, and we're also planning a program involving the valedictorians and salutatorians. We're doing our best to pull out all the stops to make sure our students receive the recognition that they deserve. Colleges will mail diplomas to every student and are planning to hold in-person commencements when circumstances permit. I also want to update the board on some of the work that we've done uh, to deal with the COVID-19 scenarios and do some planning for the future. I have established two new task forces to provide a roadmap for the reopening of our campuses and the conversion back from distance education in the months ahead after the New York State on pause executive order is lifted. The new Academic and Student Support Task Force will be chaired by Jose Luis Cruz, Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost, with an eye towards developing the guidelines for instructional modalities and student support services for the coming academic terms. His group will produce enrollment management strategies to boost summer and fall enrollment, academic program strategies to ensure quality of instruction, student support services strategies to make sure students have the resources they need, and other policies. The second unit, the Coronavirus Planning Task Force, will be co-chaired by Hector Batista, Executive Vice Chancellor and Chief Operating Officer, and Glenda Grace, Senior Vice Chancellor and Special Counsel. They will provide policy and operational guidance, frameworks, and protocols for the university as it prepares to restart on-campus operations following state and city guidelines. They would also address our classrooms, libraries, cafeterias, offices, and dormitories will operate under social distancing guidelines and what level of equipment and supplies will be needed. As the chair mentioned, we continue moving along with our national presidential searches uh, for LaGuardia and Queensboro, and those are both at the final stage. I hope to recommend my next round of appointments to you at the June 29th board meeting. The search committee for BMCC is scheduled to conduct preliminary interviews later this month and recommend finalists to me for consideration then to submit to the board. As for Lehman, York, and Gutman Colleges, we hope to finalize the appointment of the presidential search committee soon and conduct kickoff meetings by the end of May or early June. I want to take this moment to applaud uh, Governor Cuomo for his leadership, but in this case in particular for his selection of John Jay College of Criminal Justice President Carol Mason to serve on his Reimagine Education Advisory Council. Her record of success in the fields of education, law, and justice 
make President Mason an important voice for underserved communities and a great CUNY representative to that important advisory council. I'm also proud to see CUNY staff already working with government and health leaders. As you know, contact tracing will be a critical component of any effort to reopen, and hundreds of CUNY students are being recruited and trained to participate in this vital operation as part of a joint effort between Governor Cuomo and former Mayor Mike Bloomberg, and also as part of the city's efforts. I'd like to give some updates on our continuing efforts to guide the university through the COVID-19 crisis. Um, the chancellor joins Governor Cuomo and all of our state and city leaders in calling on the federal government to take prompt action and stave off potentially the cuffs or academic programs, campuses, and students. Because of the uncertainty in the overall impact on, of COVID-19 on our budget, we have proposed extending the deadline for notification of agents reappointments to May 29th. The university proposed the extension to allow more time for either federal aid to the state to come through or details about the state and city budget allocations to CUNY to materialize, but the proposal was originally rejected by the PSC. The federal government has allocated $236 million to CUNY through the CARES Act, the first half of which is to be distributed to students in the form of emergency assistance grants. About 190,000 undergraduate and graduate students are potentially eligible to receive one of these grants. Those students are being notified this week and most can expect to receive their awards in the coming day as early as this Friday. The second half of that money, the institutional share is pending, along with an additional 40 million federal allocation to CUNY colleges that meet requirements as minority serving institutions. College presidents will be asked to develop a plan conforming to centrally specified guidelines for using the CARES institutional and MSI funds which might be used for a range of stipulated expenses that are connected to the coronavirus outbreak. As you know, our vow to never exclude anyone from the learning process inspires us to launch the Chancellor's Emergency Relief Fund on April 8th to provide urgent support to CUNY students facing disruptions on their lives. According to a mid-April survey by the CUNY's Office of Institutional Research, almost 40% of, of our students reporting losing their employment during the outbreak, with the greatest needs being for food and general expenses. We have raised over four million so far uh, in philanthropic corporate and individual donations, including many of you, for which I thank you. Uh, by the end of this week, we'll give another $500 in grants to 4,000 CUNY students, in this case, prioritizing undocumented and international students who are not eligible for the CUNY CARES Act funding. Many individuals from CUNY have stood with their classmates and neighbors and helped the university and the broader New York City community weather the storm of COVID-19 the responses from the university have been truly extraordinary. I'd like to send a special shout out. Everyone has donated and produced personal protective equipment for health workers, students in medical fields who are taking their places on the front lines and making a difference by saving lives, and those who have raised money and donated food. Many students are balancing classwork with high stress jobs as first responders and their service to this city has been nothing short of remarkable. As I joined a video teleconference on April 13 to cheer the inaugural graduating class of the CUNY School of Medicine, I was reminded of the school's mission to address healthcare disparities in underserved areas. These newly minted MDs are a perfect match for the moment, and I had tears in my eyes as I heard them talk about what it meant to them to end their classes early and set out to join the frontline fight against the ongoing pandemic. This is also a time where we celebrate a lot of awards from our students and our faculty. 
the Fulbright U.S. Student Program awarded scholarships to 16 students and recent graduates from CUNY. Three high-achieving CUNY community college students claimed a highly competitive Jack Ken Cook Foundation undergraduate transfer scholarship. A recent Brooklyn College grad was honored with the renowned Soros Fellowship for New Americans. Two CCNY students won coveted Jeanette Watson Fellowships. Two Hunter students won Lou Scholarships. And Macaulay Honors and City College students won the Barry Air M. Goldwater National Scholarship. Two professors at the Graduate Center of the City University of New York have been elected to the academies that are regarded among the nation's greatest honors in their fields. Two nationally celebrated fiction writers and educators from Brooklyn College and an acclaimed artist at the College of Staten Island were awarded 2020 Guggenheim Fellowships. CUNY's nationally recognized ASAP program won the Innovations in American Government Award from the Harvard John F. Kennedy School of Government. And CUNY took home two New York Emmy Awards, one that went to CUNY to be and the QTV and the other to City Tech. We also won three 2020 Pulitzer Prizes. One for the Newmark Day School board member, Nicole Hannah Jones, one for commentary. Newmark Day School adjunct, Adriana Gallardo, a ProPublica reporter, one for public service. And Brooklyn College alumni, Greg Gradding, one for general nonfiction. Also, Brooklyn College professor Ben Lerner was a finalist for fiction. I want to end um, with this uh, closing remarks. And um, while life in New York has obviously changed, our commitment to our students, faculty, and staff has never been stronger. We continue to advocate for everyone at the university. We continue to plan for a time when we will return to campus. We don't quite know when that will be, but we hope that the time will be soon. We continue to cry and mourn the people we have lost in this pandemic. We continue to do all we can to help those in need. And we continue to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our students in every way that we can. We are able to balance all these contrasting emotions and actions we hope because we have to and because we're truly strong. So please stay safe, stay upbeat, and remain vigilant. Thank you, and that concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you for those words. Uh, let's now turn to the items requiring a vote today. Given that all board members are participating remotely, I'll read the resolutions and ask for members to respond only if you would like to abstain or oppose an item. Otherwise, your vote will be recorded as a yes vote. If you're voting no or abstaining, please state your name and vote. Additionally, if you wish to second an item or have any questions, please state your name first for the record and let's try and avoid speaking over each other. For clarity and coordination, I'll read all the items rather than turning to committee chairs. And let me take a shot at this now. Item number one, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting and executive session of March 30th, 2020. I move that that be approved. Can I have a second? Brian Oberfeld, second. second. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Okay, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. Okay, that item is approved. Item number two, Committee on Fiscal Affairs. Item 2A, a resolution requesting the authorization of a 12-month contract extension with Sierra Cedar Incorporated to continue providing managed hosting services to CUNY First. CUNY is planning to move the operations to the new university-owned data center located at 395 Hudson Street in Manhattan. CUNY is in the process of completing a competitive procurement to identify a third-party vendor that will assist the university in managing and supporting the ERP system at its new location. However, until the procurement is finalized, the existing contract needs to be extended to accommodate the transition. The contract extension shall be a maximum of 12, month, 12 months and shall not exceed $8,194,824. Can I have a second for that? Una Clark, second. All right. Any discussion on the item? 
All right, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. All right, that item is approved. Item 2B, a resolution requesting the authorization of a contract with Sierra Theater to provide the application management services for the CUNY First system at the university-owned data center located at 395 Hudson Street in Manhattan. Sierra Theater will provide the expertise necessary to manage the software and hardware components of CUNY First system and support the business's continuity and resiliency of the administrative and academic record system. The university seeks to increase the efficiency and management of CUNY First and reduce operating costs by moving and hosting the CUNY First system in the university data center. The contract shall will be a maximum of five years and shall not exceed $26,220,000. May I have a second for this item? Una Clark, second. Thank you. Uh, is there a discussion on this item? All right, we will now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 2C, a resolution requesting the authorization of a contract with Nagaro Incorporated to provide IT services for the Enterprise Service Desk implementation. The implementation will provide improved service delivery to students, faculty, and staff by providing enhanced communication on technology systems, including online hope and ticket submission and tracking. The contract shall be for a maximum of 11 months and shall not exceed $1,380,000. May I have a second for this item? Career Henry seconds. Okay. Discussion on this item? All right, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 2D, a resolution requesting the authorization of a contract amendment with the Education Advisory Board Global Incorporated. The current contract dated May 9th, 2018, provides for a predictive analytic software system that supports the provision of academic advisory services and database decision-making to better facilitate timely progress towards degree completion by the university's undergraduate students. And this amendment is expanding the contract to include the graduate student population of university student at its, students at its baccalaureate granting institutions and the School of Labor and Urban Studies. The contract amendment shall not exceed $450,000 over the life of the original contract. May I have a second? Burger seconds. Discussion on this item? All right, we'll Thank now you. vote. Please only, please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 2E, a resolution requesting the authorization of a contract between the CUNY School of Professional Studies and the New York Historical Society to pro provide a practical component for the Museum Studies offered BS. The Museum Studies degree course is available for graduate credit at SPS, each course being rich in content that allows students to have actual on-site hands-on experiences in exhibition design, document handling and preservation, and curatorial work through the practice components of the course that is offered at the New York Historical Society. The contract shall be for five years and shall not exceed $1.2 million. May I have a second for this item? Career seconds. Any discussion on this item? All right, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item's approved. Item 2F, a resolution requesting the authorization of in-state tuition rate for online degree and certificate programs and authorization of an online infrastructure fee for fully online credit-bearing graduate programs at the Graduate School of Public Health and Health Policy. These new rates will be effective for fall 2020. All students that enroll in one of the fully online programs will be charged the state tuition, regardless of the residency, and a $75 online infrastructure fee for each term of enrollment. 
May I have a second for this item? Herrera seconds. Second. Discussion on this item? Hi, Chairman Thompson. This is Timothy Hunter. Uh-huh. I do have one thing I'd like to say. I mean, I think that it's great that we're, we're transitioning and allowing the students that are, like, um, to pay in-state tuition regardless of their, their residency here. Um, the one thing I, I think that I would love to follow up on is to ensure that there's a little bit more clarity into, like, the, the $75 infrastructure fee and, like, the resolution doesn't talk about the oversight, um, especially, like, you know, that, like, you know, that we discussed about, like, earlier, and I'd love to follow up with SPH mm -hmm. on this, but unfortunately... I'll be voting no on this resolution until like I can see some clear language um, around like uh, where who's going to be like you know in control of that funding um, and if there is a group kind of similar to what we do with student activity fee and tech fee um, like you know I would I would love to see that reflected in the resolution. Okay, I I understand, Trustee Hunter. You've made your position clear before. I appreciate it. Any other discussion on this item? All right, we will now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. Trustee Hunter, you're, an, uh, you're a no vote? Yes. Anyone else? All right, that item is approved. Item 2G, a resolution requesting the approval of an updated investment policy statement on March 19, 2018, which included a new long-term asset allocation focused on enhancing the diversification of the assets of the portfolio and the investment policy statement established a long-term asset allocation that provides the university the opportunity for enhanced diversification within asset classes. Strategic asset allocation is the single biggest factor in long-term returns. Each asset class has a target allocation and includes acceptable ranges that the university's outsourced chief investment officer Officer Makita Fiduciary Management must stay within in order to be in compliance with the university's investment policy. May I have a second for this item? Four seconds. Second. Any discussion on this item? All right, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 2H, a resolution requesting the approval of the fiscal year 2021 CUNY investment portfolio spending rate. The CUNY investment portfolio is a pooled investment vehicle for multiple individual accounts that include both endowed and non-endowed funds. The sources of the portfolio are funds received by CUNY for its general purposes for the benefit of a specific college or are funds belonging to one or more of the college's affiliated entities including the college foundations that have chosen to invest in the portfolio. In making this expenditure, this expenditure appropriation determination, the Board Subcommittee on Investments has reviewed the categories and the composition of each group to ensure funds are properly classified. It is deliberated on the prudence of the spending rate for each of the categories based upon the eight prudence factors mandated and listed in Exhibit B, subsection 1A of the City University Investment Policy prior to making its recommendation to the board for fiscal year 2021. May I have a second for this item? Second. Any discussion on this item? Hey, Jim. Hello? Any discussion on Hi. the item? Okay, all right, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item's approved. I miss the committee structures. I miss it being in a room with everybody. This is work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Item number three, Committee on Academic Policy, Programs, and Research. Items 3A through 3J are resolutions requesting the approval of honorary degrees. Item 3A, Baruch College, award... Dr. Roz Chetty with an honorary degree. 3B, City College of New York. Award Senator Cory Booker with honorary degrees. 3C, mm. City College of New York. Award Mr. Benjamin Ferens with honorary degrees. 3D, College of Staten Island. Award Mr. Bernard Carabello with an honorary degree. And 3E, Lehman College. Award for Dr. Aratsis Barbo with an honorary degree. 3F, 
Lehman College Award, Bobby Santabria, with an honorary degree, 3G, CUNY Graduate School of Public Health and Health Policy, Award for Dr. Natalia Canham, with an honorary degree, 3H, CUNY Graduate School and University Center, Award for Mr. George Takai, with an honorary degree, 3I, CUNY School of Law, Award Reverend Dr. William Barber II, with an honorary degree, 3J, CUNY School of Labor and, Honor and, Labor and Urban Studies, Award Mr. Arthur Chelyotis, with an honorary degree. May I have mm. a second for these items? I need second. a second. Any discussion on these items? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. Those items are approved. Item 3K, a resolution requesting the approval of special COVID-19 graduate admissions policy. The special COVID-19 graduate admissions policy in evaluating future candidates for admission to graduate programs, the university will not disadvantage students who present P as in pass or CR credit grades in their transcripts for courses, specifically taking during spring 2020 and other terms which could be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, regardless of whether their institutions opposed a flexible or similar grading policy for all students or gave them the choice to opt in. All university graduate admissions committees shall adjust their selection processes to honor this commitment while keeping with the norms of their specific programs and corresponding disciplines. May I have a second for this item? Shorter, second. I second. Okay. Any discussion on this item? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 3L, a resolution requesting approval of CAPRA dashboard effective May 19th. May I have a second for this item? Kirker seconds. Is there any discussion on this item? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number four, Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. Item 4A, a resolution requesting the approval of the, of the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration, uh, the CFSA report, effective May 19th. May I have a second for that? Second, Cortez Vasquez. Thank you. Any discussion on the item? We will now vote. If you'd like to please re only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. All right, that item is approved. Item 4B, a resolution requesting approval of an amendment of investment option to the City University of New York optional retirement plan and tax deferred annuity plan. The investment option changes recommended by the University Investment Advisor, CAMIC Retirement Group, and accepted by those university administrators will be enacted with transfer of future contributions and, where permitted, transfer from the eliminated investment option. In accordance with the New York Education Law, Section 6251, all investments made available under the ORP will be provided through annuity contracts. May I have a second for this item? Second, Leonardo Garcia. Thank you. Any discussions on this item? Okay, we'll now vote. Please don't respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item's approved. Item 4C, a resolution requesting the approval of the naming of the G. Scott Anderson Terrace in recognition of G. Scott Anderson's commitment to public service and his contributions to the college and the University, Borough of Manhattan Community College, enthusiastically recommends naming the terrace on the 13th floor of the Miles and Shirley Fitterman Hall as the G. Scott Anderson Terrace. May I have a second for this item? Shorter second. Any discussion on this item? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 4D, a resolution requesting the approval of the naming of D of Dr. Sadie Chavis Bragg Mathematics Lab at the Borough of Manhattan Community College in recognition of Dr. Sadie Chavis Bragg's distinguished service and transformational legacy in the field of mathematics education. 
the college and the university enthusiastically recommend naming room S535, the Dr. Sadie Chavis Bragg Mathematics Lab. They have a second for this item. Is there any discussion on this item? Okay, please don't, we're going to now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item's approved. Item 4E, a resolution requesting the appointment of Elliot Bates with early tenure with an application of bylaw 6.2C2 at the Graduate School and University Center. Elliot Bates is a nationally and internationally renowned researcher and expert in his field, as well as an exceptional educator will be highly sought after by other educational institutions as faculty and therefore the Graduate Center should make every effort to retain him. May I have a second for that? Second, the unit clerk. Thank you. Any discussion on this item? Okay, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 4F, a resolution requesting the appointment of Jonathan Gagliardi as Assistant Vice Chancellor for Academic Effectiveness and Innovation. Dr. Gagliardi's background, education, experience in higher education and extensive scholarly accomplishments make him particularly suited for this leadership role in Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost Office. The Chancellor strongly, strongly recommends this appointment with a waiver of search requirements. May I have a second for this item? Second. Thank you. Discussion on this item? Mr. Chairman, if I can, this is yeah. uh, Senior Vice Chancellor Sapienza. Um, yes. Before the, the trustee, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before the trustees uh, vote on this, this item and the other items that are, that are, um, that are coming after this, um, I just want to point out that um, although these um, appointments are on this calendar, they, these commitments for these positions were all done um, before the COVID crisis. Um, the chancellor has announced a university-wide hiring freeze, um, and we have communicated that to the colleges. Um, but the appointments that are on tonight's calendar are all appointments that were committed to before the coronavirus, um, it, taken in totality, they are all revenue neutral. Um, three of the um, appointments are folks that were currently with CUNY and just going into new positions. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear with the current fiscal environment that we are in. Okay, and there is a, and, and it has been communicated to the presidents of the colleges that there is a freeze? Correct, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Excuse um, me, Mr. Chairman. I think yes. um, Vice Chancellor uh, Sapienza says that these appointments we are voting on are covered and will not be delayed. The hiring freeze does not apply to them. No, we're moving on, right. as he indicated, these had occurred Fine. before. I just wanted to be clear about it, that. Okay, thank you. Yes, but it is clear that there is a CUNY-wide hiring freeze. Okay. Uh, any? Did I have a second for this? I just don't remember that. Um, may I have a second for this item? The United States second. second. Okay. Any discussion or other discussion on this item? Okay. We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item's approved. Item 4G, a resolution requesting the, appro the appointment of Hope Burt as Vice President for Campus Planning, Facilities Management, and Operations at the College of Staten Island. The appointment of Hope, of Hope Burt as the Vice President for Campus Planning, Facilities Management, and Operations will ensure that the College of Staten Island continues to have the critical leadership and oversight of the essential operations of the college's major functional areas, including campus public safety, environmental health and safety operations, operational services, mailroom services, print shop services, and event management. The Chancellor strongly recommends this appointment from a search. May I have a second for this item? Arvaniti, second, and let me just say that she's, uh, she's been instrumental in dealing with 
the largest campus in CUNY's portfolio. <laughs> thank, thank you, Trustee. Um, any other any discussion on this item? Okay, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. This item is approved. Item 4H, a resolution requesting the appointment of Dr. Evelyn Castro as Vice President of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management at Medgar Evers College. Dr. Castro will direct all student life and club activities, mentor and provide direction to students. Recruiting new students and retaining them is crucial to the college achieving its goals and effect and objectives, and Dr. Castro will lead the college's efforts in increasing enrollment and improving its retention rate. The college president strongly recommends this appointment and promotion. May I have a second for this? I second. Thank you. Any discussion on this item? I will now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item's approved. Item four, um, four I, a resolution requesting the appointment of, Lo of Lorna Malcolm as Vice President for Advancement at Borough of Manhattan Community College. As Vice President for Advancement, Lorna, Lorna McCollum will report directly to the President and be responsible for implementing a vision to increase major gifts through organized fundraising campaign. Ms. McCollum will be the primary steward of the board of directors of BMCC's supporting foundation, will also manage a staff of six professionals. She'll serve as a member of the president's cabinet. The interim president strongly recommends this appointment from his search. May I have a second for this? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on this item? All right. We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number five, Executive Committee Notice of Action taken April 27, 2020 for informational purposes. Item 5A, a resolution requesting the approval of the adoption of certain amendments to the its optional retirement plan, tax deferred annuity plan, and frozen ORP allowed by certain provisions of the Federal CARES Act legislation adopted in March 2020. The Executive Committee of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York authorizes the Vice Chancellor for Human Resources Management to amend the City University TDA plan, ORP and frozen ORP to allow qualified plan participants to one, take distributions or make withdrawals in calendar year 2020 of up to $100,000. Two, to increase personal loan amount limits on or before September 23, 2020 to double the current maximum amount to the lesser of $100,000 or 100% of the plan participants vested account balance in the plan, and three, to allow such plan participant defer such loan repayments under such plans for one year. Item number six, a resolution requesting the appointment of Dara Cintron as interim president at Gutman Community College. The Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approved the appointment of Dora Cintron as interim president of Gutman Community College at the City University of New York at an annual salary of $217,000, effective August 1, 2020, and the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approved the appointment of Dara Cintron as a full professor with immediate tenure in accordance with Section 6.2B of the Bylaws of the Board of Trustees. May I have a second for this item? Second, Leonidas Garcia. Is there any discussion on this item? All right, we'll now vote. Please don't respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number seven, resolution requesting the approval of Macaulay Honors College to award Dr. Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson with the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. May I have a second for this item? Second. Is there any discussion on this item? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number eight, a resolution ratifying, confirming, and approving on April 18, 2020, a supplemental agreement to the PSC Collective Bargaining Agreement 
which addresses matters relating to the COVID-19 virus state of emergency. The university, through this resolution, is ratifying, confirming, and approving the April 18, 2020 Supplemental Agreement for the COVID-19 Virus State of Emergency by and between the university and the Professional Staff Congress. The Supplemental Agreement is intended to, among other things, address the manner and procedures for one, classroom teaching observations, two, annual evaluation for both staff and faculty, three, office hours conducted through distance technology, four, Decisions on tenure, reclassification, and salary differentials that were already in process as of May 12th and 5th, an option for untenured professional faculty whose tenure decision is approaching. The agreement also permits faculty and staff to retrieve belongings from campus buildings. The agreement was agreed to by the chancellor in order to expedite the necessary changes required for the transition to distance learning during the spring 2020 semester as a result of the COVID-19 state of emergency. May I have a second for this item? Berger, second. Is there any discussion on this item? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you like to abstain or oppose. All right, hearing nothing, that item is approved. There being no further business, a motion to adjourn the meeting. I know you're, you're tired of hearing my voice. Can I have a second to that? Ferrer, so moved. Second. Second. Third and fourth. Thank you all. Thank you all. The meeting is adjourned. Everybody be safe. Take care. Be safe. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.